So our next speaker is Irinia. Okay. All right, thank you so much for inviting me and uh, I'm very happy to follow up Brian's uh, presentation. Brian and I know each other in fact for many years. I think the first time we met he was associate professor and he invited me to give a talk. So that puts things in, uh, in perspective. So I usually start my presentations with a slide which shows that yes, organ deterioration and disease are increasing exponentially with advancing age. However, I compare rat and squirrel. At the same chronological age of three years, rat will be old and full of disease and squirrel will be quite young and healthy. And so though even these animals are of the same size, relatively speaking, and squirrel even has higher metabolism than rat, they age differently. And the bottom line of this or conclusion is that the rate of aging is unlikely to be controlled by the accumulation of the damage because these animals lived in the same, on the same planet at the same entropic environment. But from our perspective, the rate of aging is controlled by the degree of repair, how much we can repair the damage. And here I would like also to introduce in my lecture the point that if you are proposing a certain treatment that you believe is anti-aging, it would be better to understand why that treatment might, might work. For example, rapamycin, why inhibiting production of ribosomes and cell function more generally, protein production and so forth, why that would be rejuvenated? Or metformin, why would inhibiting mitochondrial activity and production of ATP be rejuvenated. So in other words, um, metaphorically speaking, if you would like to throw a rock, it doesn't matter whether you do or do not know the law of gravity. You will throw the rock successfully at its target. But if you would like to launch a satellite on the orbit and that satellite has a lot of transistors in it, bunch of transistors, you cannot do it without in-depth understanding of, of physics. And so then the general approach is that they're not trying various substances. We try to understand what controls the fundamental process of aging and through that understanding develop therapeutics. And so um, the first um, point that I'm introducing, let me remove this one here, is that life and health span is controlled by the efficiency of repair or regeneration more so than by the accumulation of damage. And uh, this understanding came from um, kind of comparison between young and old person. So young and old persons will experience relatively the same damage, but young person has better repair. And then what would happen if we in induce experimentally and clinically better repair capacity in the old person. Would that mean that the old person now is younger? So that is kind of in a pinch, our, our experimental hypothesis and approach. I will briefly introduce our experimental systems. We look at rejuvenation. What Brian showed you is the delay of health decline. Can mice be become healthier? even later in life. But we look at robust reversal of aging. Can we start with an old mouse or old person and make them significantly younger and very quickly so? And the idea there is that for everything that we understand, for example, antibiotics, antibiotics work and if somebody is infected, then we cure them. They become non-infected. They do not have bacteria. So can we then extrapolate this to aging of somebody as well, can we cure them? Could we make them young if we truly understand the process? So if you are interested in robust changes from old to young, we look at mesoderm rejuvenation, for example, at muscle where we reduce fibrosis inflammation and improve muscle repair, and the derm rejuvenation where our experimental model is liver, and there we look at the reduction of fibrosis and adiposity and improved regeneration. And exodium rejuvenation, when we look at the brain, can we make brain form new neurons better, reduce neuroinflammation and improve animal cognition. 
our axiom is that when several key organs become significantly younger and healthier, we can really say that the whole animal is younger and healthier. And the opposite, in fact, is not true. I'm very glad that uh, Brian Kennedy was demonstrating to you the extension of health span and not just lifespan, because in lifespan studies, very sick old mouse could be just sitting in the corner of the cage and shivering, but it would be still considered in a positive column. It is not yet dead. And the fact that you notice, which might be of interest to this audience, is that younger, healthier tissues are impossible to coordinate without good metabolome, good organelles, good proteostasis, exosomes that are healthy gene expression and epigenetics. So once we look at the tissue health, we simultaneously know that multiple attributes of that health are also in place. Uh, the third step in the mechanistic understanding of aging and anti-aging was, is aging malleable? For example, once we become old, can we become much younger? And um, we approached it in hydrochronic parabiosis studies, which are shown here in a comical way. And then later on in much better defined hydrochronic blood exchange or apheresis studies. And I would like to know that this specific setup and experimental system was really um, encouraged in our laboratory by Aubrey de Grey, who first just encouraged and then insisted that we do it and then provided funding. And it turns out to be an excellent experimental system. So in both of the systems, multiple organs and tissues become rejuvenated. You start with an animal that is analogous to 75, 80 year old person, and you make that animal analogous to about 30 year old person. Very quickly, in a matter of weeks in parabiosis, and after one single exchange in hydrochronic apheresis. So that tells us important things mechanistically that regardless of telomere attrition, telomerase activity, epigenetic status, um, changes in metabolome. All of this is transient and could be quickly reset to younger states. So aging is reversible. Additional point here is that hydrochronic apheresis in small animals and mice is a miniaturization of a day approved procedure for people. So from that, there was a uh, highlight and some cartoons about young blood being the rejuvenative secret sauce. But um, even though in parabiosis and blood exchange, many things are similar, not all of them are similar, and that gives us additional intu intuition or additional insights about what aging is and how to reverse it. For example, in parabiosis, where mice share not only blood, but also organs and environment is changed, um, formation of new neurons in the hippocampus, shown here as green dots or red dots, and hippocampus is the area that is important for learning and memory. So formation of these neurons declines with age dramatically, and it can be induced, improved in old animals that share blood with young animals, which we discovered first back in 2004. And after sharing this data with Tony Weiss-Corey, his laboratory embarked on similar studies and re replicated, repeated what we found. And then young mice suffer from being sutured to old partners. So their neurogenesis declines in hippocampus. So that happens when animals actually physically suture to each other and they share many other things, not just blood. But if you look at what happens in just blood exchange, again, young, young mice, young mice exchange with young blood have better neurogenesis than old, old control animals. And this neurogenesis declines through one single exposure of young animal to old blood. It is obliterated. So old blood is really inhibitory. But there is no improvement in young mice after 50% of their old blood was replaced with young. Putting a big question mark on whether young blood is a medicine. And there are additional things that I do not have time to show. And this is uh, an example of functional test, which is called four limb hanging. Mice have to hang on the upside down uh, inverted mesh. And 
they learn how to hang. So in the first trial period, young mice try to hang and then old, and then eventually they so. And it is not a brute force test, so there is no statistical significant difference between young animals and old animals. They actually like doing that. They usually climb on the tops of the cages and hang as much as they can. But then after this uh, test or trial or exercise, when you retest them again, if young mice were exchanged with young blood, three out of four now learn how to hang and they display better agility and cognition, memory. You, you need to have many different parameters to learn how to navigate this test. But if young mice are exchanged with old blood, three out of four now are not statistically different from the control cohort, so their cognition was poor. And once again, old animals, regardless whether they have old blood or 50% young blood, are not better. So that tells you something, right? So that is the science from which we then make the next step. The next step for us was that the intuitive jump to young blood being the medicine was inaccurate. And then additional, there was a lot of data for that in our laboratory, which we were running at UC Berkeley with Dr. Mike Conboy and myself, myself for over 10 years, 15 years, in fact. But uh, among this data, one thing that you, you might be interested to know is that if you mix young blood and old blood and expose cultured cells to that mixture, old blood dominates and inhibits performance of even young stem cells. Again, indicating that young blood is not a medicine and old blood is a problem. And so that brings me to, um, to the paper that we published recently in Aging. By the way, it was reviewed in Nature and then after extensive reviewing, we were suggested to do yet more experiments and reply to reviewers' comments. And I'm not a very patient person, so instead of doing all of that, we decided to publish the study elsewhere. Um, and um, what the study demonstrates is that young blood is not a medicine, and furthermore, surprisingly, it is not needed for rejuvenation. In other words, the fact rejuvenation takes place without a putative cause, young blood. And instead, old plasma dilution is robustly rejuvenative, and it is, in fact, more rejuvenative than many other current approaches on silver bullets or so forth. So here we modified the procedure of isochronic exchange in small animals by exchanging young or old mice with saline and albumin and returning their cells back to the animal. So the cells remained the same age as the mouse, but 50% of their plasma was diluted with physiologic solution that has no age. So we call it neutral blood exchange. As I mentioned, the same procedure is approved by the people. I hear some um, somebody's noises, so if you guys can maybe mute your microphone. You guys hear the speaking? I don't think I can continue. Oh, thank you. Um, right. So here we tested a couple of things. One is that if you have an old animal and there is no young blood, you simply dilute old blood factors by 50%, will it become older? Because if you postulate that young blood is needed for, for youth, then young mouse, when you dilute young factors, would become old. And in the opposite end of the spectrum, if you have old mouse and you dilute 50% of its blood serum, will it become younger? or not. And so the answer is shown here for muscle. And uh, specifically, you are looking at the newly regenerated tissues where white areas represent the bad outcome of fibrosis and these blue dots and white areas are bad. And then this newly formed muscle fibers represent a good outcome. And you can also look at it through immunofluorescence for the marker of the newly formed muscle fibers that replace injury site, which is called embryonic mice chain. And so by all of these metrics, either looking at regeneration, fibrosis, or how healthy the new muscle fibers are, single procedure of blood dilution, plasma dilution, rejuvenated old animals 
to the degree that they are not different from Young. That is really the, the only outcome, to my knowledge, where all the animals now become indistinguishable from Young, at least in this metric. And the same will be true for reduction of fibrosis, and the same will be true for the improving the health of the newly formed muscle fibers. And in all of these experiments, young animals did not become older when we diluted their blood plasma by 50%. They are still young. And because this procedure is FDA approved, we had a collaboration, and this collaboration is ongoing right now. In fact, there's phase two clinical trials. Collaboration is with Professor Dobry Kipro, where we analyze what happens to humans that underwent this procedure. And we also analyze the effects specifically of albumin, human serum albumin. Is it important or is dilution more important? And what I'm showing you here is that if you look at the proliferation of muscle precursor cells that are exposed to serum, blood serum from old individuals, before procedure, their proliferation is low, but after therapeutic plasma exchange, one single procedure, their responses are high. So instead of being inhibitory, their blood plasma now is supportive of regeneration. And the same will be true whether or not you add albumin, and by many reasons, we do not think that albumin plays a major role in the outcomes of our experiment. As I mentioned, we also look at brain and liver. And in the brain, we focus on that area of hippocampus called subgranular zone, where new neurons are formed from the dividing neural stem cells. And once, um, once again, remarkably, one procedure of neutral blood exchange, which we tested in many experimental animals and in independent experiments, made all neurogenesis indistinguishable, statistically similar to that of the young neurogenesis. There's no 20% improvement. It is really the same. And then diluting plasma of young mice did not make them older, although we have a big spread in their neurogenic responses. And the same happened in the liver. We look at liver adiposity, which is increased with age and is reduced by neutral blood exchange and liver fibrosis, which is increased with age and is reduced by neutral blood exchange. Once again, the key uh, take home message is that single procedure of neutral blood exchange is robustly and rapidly rejuvenated. As one would expect if you actually uncover the mechanistic cause of aging and therefore uncovered proverbially so-called antibiotic against aging. You will see effects in multiple organs and tissues and the effect would be that of a cure. And then you look at proteomes of uh, animals. That, excuse yeah. me, but we are running late. So I think it's time to come to a conclusion. Thank you. Oh, that's just too bad. But uh, the, key, uh, the key conclusion is that numerous young factors shown here in, in, uh, in the red column were upregulated in old animals or people through, therapeutic, through the neutral blood exchange or therapeutic plasma exchange. So one does not need to add them back. They are already robustly present once you calibrate the old factors. And then my conclusion is here is that uh, there are many different attributes of aging. And yet there is a skeleton key which normalizes all of them as needed for healthy tissue. As I mentioned in the beginning, none of that could happen if tissues are not healthy. So once you identify the skeleton key, you don't need to bother with the details. We also know that epigenetics become rejuvenated. Um, and we also know that the behavior or cognition becomes rejuvenated, although this is shown for a slightly different experimental setup. But old mice become younger with respect to their cognitive capacity. So these are my uh, overall conclusions. And thanks to the laboratory, as I mentioned, we, under, we are now um, undertaking phase two clinical trials with Dobre Kiprov being clinical director and we are doing scientific part of the trial. So the conclusions are that young animals with the, their young blood and cells are rapidly aged by a transient exposure to old blood. Will young blood or factors be effective in all question mark? And then large dilution of systemic milieu stably sets molecular and genetic determinants to younger states. And that makes most of all, all organs and tissues younger. 
here are my disclosures. I'm trying to start the company. There are clinical trials underway. And we have been very, very fortunate with funding from NIH, state funding, and philanthropic funding. And thank you to the Kanbu Laboratory. Sorry, I ran a little bit over. Thank you so much for your lecture, uh, Irina. Um, please answer some of the uh, questions in the chat, but we don't really have time to answer questions on uh, screen. So I think it's uh, time to move to the next speaker. Uh, thanks again for your lecture.